guys and girls, I'm James and welcome to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the Danalog D DRDG 600 C 3PO. No, I'm just joking. That's a lot of numbers. We'll just call it the Danalog drone. Uh, guys, when Danalog reached out to me and they wanted to send me this drone, I mean, it's hard to get excited about another budget beginner drone. But when I looked at this one, this one is a GPS drone. Guys, I got excited because there's just not too many budget beginner drones out there that have GPS. The only one that was like this was kind of like the Holystone HS-175 series that's really popular. But then I saw that it's got autonomous flight features. In other words, it's got flight features that everybody always wanted the, the DJI Mini 1 and Mini 2 series to have. But DJI would never put those kind of features on this drone because, because they know if they did, they'd get back a bunch of wrecked drones. So this one doesn't have obstacle avoidance, but it does have follow me, point of interest, waypoints. And guys, I've crashed it twice trying to use it without the obstacle avoidance. You know, I know what you're thinking. James, quit crashing drones, right? But guys, if I don't crash them and put them to the test of how far the limits are, uh, I can't do a true review. So that's why whenever a company wants to send me a budget beginner drone, I have them send me two <laughs> budget beginner drones. So cool, it's a budget beginner drone with GPS and autonomous flight features, but then I saw the price. Guys, this is only $149 on Amazon right now. And right now there's a $20 off discount code below. So this is $129. You get GPS, it does have brushed motors, but it says 4K camera, probably really gonna be more like a 1080. Two batteries, really good flight time. So much more to fun to play with. Uh, don't crash it like I did. And we'll go over that when I'm flying it. Guys, you, if you're gonna use those autonomous flight features, you've gotta have a big open field. And I'll explain to you why I crashed them. But even over all of that, what I like about this one the most is the app. The interface with the app as a beginner is laid out so good. Everything works really well. Um, it has a little bit of quirkiness to it, and I'll get into that when we're flying it and in my final review. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go out, we'll fly it. I'll even show you the autonomous flight features. Then I'll sit down, I'll go over the features of the drone, the interface with the app, and I'll tell you what I did that made this drone crash. It was my fault, not the drone's fault but it's things you're gonna have to watch out for. And, Cause guys, this is a really good drone at a great price to see if drones are for you. Uh, Cause if you spend $129, you know, you're not breaking the bank before you go out and spend thousands to see if you like drones or not. And you're probably thinking, man, I wish it had obstacle avoidance too. The cheapest drone out there that has autonomous flight features got true obstacle avoidance is the DJI Mini 3 Pro. And it's over a thousand dollars with the RC controller. So how good can it really be at this price? Does it do too many things and not any of them good enough? Well, I think you're gonna be surprised. I sure was. So let's go put her up in the air. Unlock her. All right, so as soon as you launch any drone for the first time, be sure and let it hover for a little bit. I always do that anytime, even if it's not the first time to make sure the satellites um, have all been set so it can set its return to home before sending it off. Uh, every drone's gonna have its little quirkiness to it. So you kind of got to get used to uh, what it's going to do. Also understand how to use return to home. So if you ever get panic situation where you can't see it, just hit return to home, but go in there and check your settings. Make sure, look around you. If a tree's 50 foot tall, make sure it's going to return at 60 or 70 feet because without obstacle avoidance, it could run into it. Uh, learn how to turn off GPS. Sometimes if they start acting really weird, you may just want to turn off the GPS and fly it back home manually, especially if it starts toilet bowling on you. Uh, that means the, cap the compass calibration uh, wasn't fully efficient. Be sure and land it and then recalibrate it. Speed one, speed two. Okay, so we're gonna try return to home, okay? So, Return to home. So I do like the fact that it beeped at you the whole time return to home is working. It'll also beep at you when the battery's getting low. Where'd it go? Where is it? Oh, it's right there. I lost it. Yeah, it's hard to see in the clouds. It's doing great. Oh, the bird almost got it. Holy moly, that's a close one. Actually, I think the Bird did get a piece of the drone. Hope it didn't hurt him. <laughs> look, look, oh my gosh. Did you film that? Yes, sir. The pot, <laughs> oh my gosh. So when it's landing, make sure it's gonna land close to where it took off. If it's a little bit off and it's gonna hit something, just cancel it and then land it manually. You know, it, when I went to, all right. 
So that's return to home. Pretty good. All right, so let's go back up. All right, so now we're gonna try, uh, boy, it's sure working a lot better. Y yesterday when I was flying it, when it was like 110, man, it did horrible. Actually yesterday it was 111, but the heat index was even higher. So be sure and check your manual and see the range that your drone can fly in. Uh, it caused the ECU to overheat and cause the drone to fly weird. Uh, it could damage your drone also. So next I try follow me, which is my second favorite thing to do with the drone in autonomous flight features. And what that means is the drone flies itself. That's what autonomous missions mean. Uh, so when it's following you, uh, you can do it if you're walking. I tried doing my bike yesterday and it kept losing me, but I thought maybe it's because I was wearing a black t-shirt, my bike's black and the asphalt is black and there's no contrast. But really I think it's just following the remote. So don't buy this drone thinking you're going to go snow skiing and it's going to follow you down the mountainside. But the fact that you can learn how these features work with the drone of this price is really amazing to me that it um, it really worked well for what it is. I mean, it's not a Skydio or a DJI drone, but I mean, I really didn't expect these to work. I was really impressed. So next I'm going to try the orbit mode, which is really my favorite thing to do with the drone because that's what my, all my realtors want. When I go do a roof inspection, I always give them an orbit mode of the property that they're selling. One tip is that it does let you set the parameters of the orbit mode between five and 20 meters. But as soon as you hit upload, it's going to go backwards really fast and start it. So it doesn't have obstacle avoidance. So I smashed it right into my house the other day and I know I was more than 20 meters away. So that's not completely quite accurate. So if you're going to try it, try it in a big open field on any of these autonomous features. Okay, there it goes. That's what I did last time. I did it too big. Oh, that looks good. All right, there's circle mode. So that's 10 meters, you know it? So when it sets 10 meters, that's what I did. I had it on 20 meters and it took off backwards. So that's what it was doing. It's doing good. Wow, check that out. That looks really good. My goodness, it's just doing good. Oh my gosh, excuse me for sounding like such a dork. I'm just blown away by how well this is performing all of its autonomous functions. Uh, this is a great way to learn how to use these functions on an inexpensive drone. Just real scary that it doesn't have obstacle avoidance doing this. That's why DJI never put it on their mini series until it, the mini three that now has obstacle avoidance. So I said I crashed this drone twice. Once I smashed it into my house and the second time I got it on video and I'll show you that next when I'm doing the waypoint missions because I wasn't careful enough when I set my waypoint missions with my height and I smashed it right into that tree. So hit waypoints on the app, then you open up your maps. That blue circle is gonna be set to what you set on the parameters. And then you hit, you touch it to one, two, three, four and hit upload and it's gonna go. Um, you can't move the drone to cancel it. You've gotta go back in there and hit the button. <laughs> I set your way. That was good to know. I set my waypoints right into a tree. <laughs> it broken? No. It's okay. Yep. Wow. Oh my gosh. Look at that. It did fine. So don't set your waypoints right into a tree because it won't. Because you it once you upload it, it doesn't stop. Oh my gosh. I'm an idiot. All right, so back to the serious stuff. Here I am holding the drone and getting a shot. The color saturation is really good, but here I am flying it. And of course, there's a lot of jello in movement because it's not a three axis gimbal. Uh, one thing I do like about it right here, it overexposes and then the camera corrects itself. That's pretty cool. They say it's a 4K, it's more like a 1080 to me. Uh, if you don't like the props in the shot, just tilt the camera down a little bit. I always thought that was kind of look cool. Um, and here, here comes a bird <laughs> going after the drone again. You gotta be careful. I've had them attacked by bees also. All right, and here's some pictures that I took. Uh, if you look, the color's a little bit off, maybe because it's hot outside, because if you look at from the inside when I took it where it's cooler, it's much better. 
All right, so we're gonna go inside. I'm gonna do a quick test on the battery to see how long the flight time is. Then I'm gonna sit down, go over the drone, go over that interface with the app, and then I'll go back for my final review. Um, if you don't wanna sit there through all of the interface with the app, it's time stamped underneath if you wanna go straight to the end. But if you buy this drone, I'm gonna really show you all the aspects of the drone and how to get it in the air and how to use the app and the different things that you need to know before you fly it. So here, um, I take it inside. I'm flying the drone around. It does not have prop guards. I really wouldn't fly this inside unless you're a really good pilot. One good thing is you can practice is to have the drone face away from you when you start flying it because when it spins around and comes at you, the orientation is backwards. So uh, without having prop guards, if one of these props get into a bind inside your house, it'll burn up these little brushed motors. <laughs> so here's my dogs are used to chasing the mini drones all over the house. So it got right at 12 and a half minutes of flight time before it landed itself, which really means you're probably really going to get about 11 minutes because it'll st it started beeping at me right at about 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So within 30 seconds of it starting to beep at you, um, try to try to land it. <laughs> I sure love my old beagle. He's almost 16 years old. Can you believe that? All right, let's see what he weighs in at. He weighs in at 202 grams. You know, compared to the, wow, that's exactly what the HS-175 weighs in at, which, you know, compared to like the Mini Pro 3 Deep, it's got a little few, few accessories on it. And check this thing out that I'm reviewing next. This is the M Mavic Air, <laughs> believe it or not. Looks like it's bigger, but it actually weighs 198. So how much is 202 grams? 202 grams is about the same weight as three cliff bars. Oh boy, I get to eat one. All right guys, so it comes in a really nice box, does not come in a carrying case, but this is a really nice box. So don't tear it up when you open it, you're gonna to wanna to use that. So it comes with instruction booklets, the drone, uh, two batteries, the charger, extra props, a tr uh, charger, charger for the phone, a uh, charger for the remote, because the remote is chargeable. You can see they sent me two of them. <laughs> so I get to give them away. And I'll have uh, entries in the description on how to enter the giveaways for these drones because this remote is chargeable and it comes with a charger. It's got two really nice, it's got these nice handles. Uh, these antennas are not real. This flips up and holds your phone. Right here, this is a GPS drone so it has returned to home so you hit this button i showed you how good that worked over here is your speed switch i know it's a dial and there's only two speeds so it's one and two it, you'll hear two beeps uh, this is a short press to take a photo over here is to take a video right here is headless mode don't ever use that uh, that takes away the orientation of a drone and will teach you bad habits Here's your power switch. You hold down on this to do your compass calibration. Especially, um, this one seemed to toilet bowl on me the first time I went out. I think I showed you. And so if it's toilet bowling on you, which means it seems just to be drifting and not holding its position, then you wanna press land it and recalibrate it. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to calibrate the compass. So when you turn the drone on, lights are gonna blink really fast because it's not bound to the remote. So when you turn the remote on, you wait a minute, now it's bound. Once it's hooked up to your Wi-Fi, go back to the app. Also make sure that the beginner mode's not turned on when you, when you first buy it, or it's not gonna fly very far. Make sure beginner's mode turned off if you want it to. So to calibrate the compass, there's a button right here. So you push, you push down on it, hold down, there it goes. Hold down on it, now it's telling you to rotate it three times this way. It'll beep at you. Then you hold it horizontal. You go, you do it three times. So if it, if you're flying it and it's not, this seems to be flying weird, um, redo this. Also, you can't do this over metal. So even if you're doing it in your driveway, there's rebar in the metal and it won't get a good compass calibration. So you can't do it on the hood of your car. The reason you need to do a compass calibration is the satellites don't know what's the front and the back of the drone. You know how when you get in your car and you start to drive and your GPS all of a sudden tells you to turn around and go back? Because when you took off, it didn't know what the front of your car was. You can't have that happen on a flying vehicle. So a compass calibration tells it exactly where the drone is, what's the front and the back and bottom of the drone. And this is your takeoff and landing button. You can also 
Uh, once you have it calibrated, you can pull in on the sticks and start the props and push up on this one. And then this one is your GPS. Uh, the, only the only time you'd ever want to turn off your GPS is if you're flying it indoors. Then you got these four lights here uh, that light up. It shows you if you're using headless mode, if you're using speed two. So on the drone, these props are labeled B2. And if you look on the bottom, labeled right here, B2. So B2 and A2 all go in the same ones. It doesn't matter if these two are switched or these two are switched. You just got to get the angle of attack right on both of these. So there's a little gear in here that, that turns this motor. So if you get these in a bind, it's gonna strip the motor and it does not come with prop guards. So be really careful. So when you turn the drone on, it's got these really cool lights. Uh, they're blue in the back and then it's got the green lights in the back. Uh, they, then the gimbal, you can move it manually. Uh, the camera takes really good pictures, but of course it's not a three axis gimbal. And again, what a three axis gimbal means is that the camera will move up, down, and around. So as, as the drone's flying, the camera stays in position and you don't get that horizontal tilt. But on this one, but as you're filming, the horizon on your video is not gonna be stable. It's gonna move with the movement. So it does come with two batteries and it comes with this independent charger. Uh, they're pr pr proprietary batteries and it plugs in, lights red, turns green when it gets through charging. Actually it comes with four props instead of just two. Lots of times they come with just uh, two props. And it does come with extra screws to change out the props. It does come with an instruction booklet and a quick start guide. I flew it with my drone, but I'm gonna use my iPad to show you how to use the app. Open up your camera, go to the correct QR code. It'll take you to the website, download the app. Danalog Besta. I really like the app. Open up the app, you can hit start gives you some warnings, gives you really nice instructions on all the different things that work in the app, but let me show them to you. So you can hit, I know, you turn on the drone, face it away from you, turn on the remote. So the drone is not bound to the app because it's a Wi-Fi drone. So what you have to do, and you may want to make your pre-start checklist is go back to your settings, go to Wi-Fi, and then here it is, the DR DG600C. You hit that, you wait for it to have a check. Now the drone is connected to your device, which is probably gonna be your phone. Wait for the check, then you can go back to the app. Hit start, next, I know. So now the camera's on, the camera's really nice. So we don't have satellites because we're inside, but real quickly, shows you the remote battery, the drone battery. You can use the hand gestures if you want. What you do is you do a peace sign, but you gotta hold your hand away from you. Take a picture, take a video, go back and look at your media. Uh, you can go into settings and set your flight distance and flight altitude. This return to home is the important one. So if there's, if there's trees around you that are say 40 meters high, you wanna at least set this to 50 or 60 meters, right? It does not have obstacle avoidance. It'll just run into them. So hit confirm. It's gonna save them. Then up here is how it's connected, how many satellites and waypoints. And how you do that is you set it and then you can draw. I wouldn't do waypoints on this one. I really wouldn't. What I do like is the follow me. And I showed you how the good the follow me works. So you, you hit follow me and you slide to the, and you slide it and it'll start following. It doesn't follow you, it just follows the remote. And then uh, point of interest is my favorite. You can set it to have, uh, please input your point of radius. In it. And so you can type it in how far you want it to go. So I want it to go at least 20 meters. Hit confirm. And then that sets the radius of how, how wide it's gonna be. Return to home and take off. And again, we're inside, so these maps aren't working real well. I'll show you, I'll do a screenshot while I'm flying it. And that's, that's it. So the main thing, guys, is you gotta have your Wi-Fi set or this isn't gonna work. And it doesn't have a gyro. You don't reset the gyros on this one. So, all right, well, let's go back for our final review. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my review of the Danalog DRDG600C or the Danalog drone. What do I think about these drones? Guys, I think this is a really good price for this drone. I think you're getting a lot for the money. I really do. Uh, to see if you really wanna get into drones. 
What do I don't like about it? I don't like that you can't stop the features once you start them. So once you put it on a waypoint mission, you better make sure the coast is clear because it doesn't want to cancel out. Uh, the orbit mode, the same thing on a lot of drones, once it's flying around and it's doing its certain features, you can just push up or down and it cancels it out. With this one, you've got to push that same button that you started it with. The same thing with waypoints. I mean, if, but by the time it's headed towards something, you're like me, I panicked, I just let it crash. But um, luckily, I gotta give it to it. It crashed really good twice. All I did was I damaged the back of this. And the reason I crashed it the first time is when I set it to 20 meters in, in the circle, it's gonna go 20 meters away from you where you're at, not circle 20 meters from where it starts. So it's gonna measure that distance from the remote and it's gonna fly backwards very quickly. So it freaked me out when it started flying backwards and flew into the side of my house because I was within 20 meters of my house. So be sure don't be a big dummy like me and not be in a big open field when you're testing equipment to see how it's going to work because they all kind of have their own quirkiness to it. Also, don't forget speed two is a dial, not a button like it usually is. And a couple times it didn't want to hook up to the Wi-Fi. I had to turn the Wi-Fi on and off, but it seemed to kind of train itself what it Wi-Fi was. And after I flew it four or five times, I didn't have that trouble anymore. I do like the lights and the look of the drone. The battery life is really good. You saw that. I got like 12 hours and 45 minutes before it lands itself. So really that's just about like 11 and a half minutes of flight time before you really need to land it. Um, I do like that the remote beeps at you when the battery's getting low, but it's really loud. It's saying, land me, land me. So overall, uh, the camera's decent. It's not great. It's not a three axis gimbal. You can't get a three axis gimbal at this price. The autonomous features, they worked really good. I was really impressed. I was thinking that they were kind of iffy. Also the first time I flew it, it was 111 outside. It didn't function that well. Guys, that was the first time I flew it. It didn't fly that good. It overheated the ECU and it was acting funky. So I'm sure it's got its limits as all drones do. I don't think there's a drone out there that you should be flying when it's 111 outside and feels like 113 with high humidity. That's just me being anxious to, I can't wait to get it up in the air. So when I, the second time I flew it, it was like 8.30 in the morning. It was still like 85. A couple things as beginners, guys always start out in speed one. Don't worry about the camera. Don't worry about the autonomous flight features until you learn the orientation of the drone. And should this be your first drone? No, I, I still say your first drone should be a little micro mini drone like this one and fly it around the house and let your dogs chase it until you learn the orientation of a drone. But if you want to buy this one as your first drone, it doesn't have prop guards. So be real careful, even though it seemed to crash really well, because uh, they are brushed motors. And what, what that means, they're not brushless. So if these props get in a bind and get hung up in something, it'll strip that little gear that's in here. Where brushless motors, like what comes on a, on more expensive drones, are like two magnets spinning inside of each other and they're highly machined, just a little bit of friction, a little bit of heat, and they're and they're very powerful, but they cost a lot of money to make. So if they if you stop them and they get in a bind, it doesn't burn them up. Where brush motors are like two brushes spinning inside of a magnet, there's heat, friction, and they, and they wear out faster. But this one seemed to have a lot of power for these brushed motors. I was really impressed. So guys, as always, if you got something out of this, please like and subscribe. Subscribers mean everything to me on this channel. And thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. It broken? It's okay. Yep. Wow. Oh my gosh. Look at that. It did fine. <laughs>